Welcome to part three of this series on in situ concrete compressive strength assessment. Cause plus NDT. This time we'll be looking at the methods described in EN 13791 for combining core test results with NDT measurements. Once again, the examples that I will show will make use of raw data provided by LNEC in Lisbon, Portugal, consisting of core data, rebound hammer and UPV measurements. So let's get started on strength assessment based on a combination of cores plus NDT. As we already mentioned in part one of this series, core test values are universally considered the reference for strength estimation. So why NDT? Well, in parts one and two, we showed how NDT can improve the strength estimation based on cores. In this part, we will see how we can overcome the limitations of core testing. Taking cores is expensive, destructive and limited in scope. Combining with NDT leads to improved estimates and allows comprehensive assessments over the entire test region. Cores are used to establish a specific relationship between the NDT measurements and in situ compressive strength. And this is the workflow when using the combined method. First of all, we do an NDT survey to map out strength variations in the structure. Based on this, we define the optimum core locations. Then we take cores at these locations. The results from the core tests are used to correlate the NDT measurements to compressive strength. In effect, we are calibrating our rebound hammer or pulse velocity instrument to the concrete under test. Using the established relationship, we can estimate the characteristic strength for the test region. But not only that, we can also estimate the characteristic strength at any specific location within the test region. When it comes to the NDT survey, it can be carried out using either rebound values or ultrasonic pulse velocity. We have two options for the pulse velocity measurement using either classical UPV or pulse echo UPV. And I'd like to say a little bit more about that. This table shows the relevant merits of the NDT methods. There is a similar table in EN 13791 using the core test as a reference. I have updated it to accommodate the pulse echo method as this has only recently become standardized. With pulse echo, the speed and economy of the UPV measurement is now comparable with that of the rebound hammer test, as it has become a one-man job with no need to draw and align a grid on both sides of the element under test. And again, for more information, please visit the Screening Eagle Technologies website. In part one, I explained conditional coring. At that time, we were using the core data only for the strength estimation. Now we will use the same results to obtain more information about the structure. If we plot the rebound measurements against the core data obtained at the same test location, we obtain a regression that is used to calculate the compressive strength at each test location. The standard requires a minimum of eight cores to do this. It is a very simple procedure using spreadsheet software like Excel or Numbers. I simply select the rebound value and core values, insert a scatter chart, select the data series, then right click to add a trend line. If I display the equation on chart, in a matter of seconds, I have my regression. Now it's a simple matter to use this equation to convert the rebound value to a compressive strength at each test location. OK, 
can also proceed to calculate the mean of these strength estimates, which we will need for the next step. The characteristic strength of the test region is calculated using the same two equations we used in part one for the core tests only. The difference this time is that the mean strength is based on the strengths calculated using the regression equation as I have just shown. The standard deviation also takes this into account. As we can see, the result is similar to that obtained using conditional coring. But now we can also create a correlation curve to estimate the strength at any location in the test region. The regression we have just created cannot be used to estimate the strength at a specific location. Why not? The reason is, is that this relationship is a mean value curve. It is not safe to use this as there is a 50% chance that the actual strength is less than the estimated strength. So one more step is required. We have to add a safety factor to our original regression. The calculation of the safety factor is a straightforward equation described precisely in the standard, making it simple to implement. And here we can see the relationship between the original curve and the new fifth percentile curve. If we use this equation for structural assessment, there is only a 5% chance that we will overestimate the strength. Screening Eagle Technologies instruments are designed to work according to the standards with safety in mind. The equation that we have just created can be entered as a custom materials curve into the Rebound Hammer app and then used together with the hammer to get a standard conforming strength estimate at any location in the test region. This removes a major limitation of the approach using cores only. For more information on this, please have a look at the tutorial on the Screening Eagle Technologies YouTube channel. The main difference between NDT and core testing is that NDT is very fast and very cheap. When you are on site, it costs very little extra to take additional NDT measurements. And this procedure allows us to make use of all of those measurements, not just those at core locations. Here you can see the results if we do just that. In this example, it has a significant effect on the safety factor, thereby increasing the characteristic strength estimation. This is a summary of all the methods explored so far, including those in part one. Please note that the additional work of doing the NDT survey is negligible compared with the cost of carrying out the core tests, so there is absolutely no argument against doing it. It improves the estimation using cores and it can be used to assess the strength at any location. I'd like to close this section by saying something about the relevance of this method to people who live in the ASTM ACI world. The procedure I've just described is now recognized in both ASTM C805 and ACI 228.1R. I'd further go on to say that it is comparatively simple to implement, so I would recommend its use in all cases.